welcome to the NBS Show, episode number 176. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. Hello, everybody. Feels good to be back on the normal show. Hey, you were here last week. Oh, was, was I? No, 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 you wasn't. Well, I'm I wasn't. I wasn't. It's weird. It's like every time I do like one week yes, one week no, but it's good to be back on the normal show. It's True that. It's nice. Yeah. Also joining us is Midnight Scribe, or Kyle. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, and I was on here last week. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, I, I need to keep track of almost everything, and this is hurting my head. Oh, listen, we don't want that to happen. Just take a step back, relax, enjoy yourself. Indeedy, indeedy. But how is everyone? How is everyone? Of course, Kyle. <laughs> oh, me first. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I'm pretty good for the most part. Uh, I've just finished uh, my job and I'm starting a new one on Monday. So exciting times. Oh, well, yeah. Congratulations on the new job. Oh, cheers. It's, uh, it's a new challenge, but, uh, well, who knows how it will go. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it goes well, man. Hope it goes well. Oh, cheers. What about you, James? Well, uh... This week has been one of those that you want to forget, but at the same time are uh, the kind of like they make you righteously angry because like you get angry for a reason, but it's a very legit reason. And it's like, yeah, yeah, feels good to be angry about this. I'm sorry. I watched Inside Out yesterday and I am in like a um, very psychoanalytic mood lately. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can't help it. Can't yeah, help it. I wish I can see Inside Out, but none of my friends want to watch it. Why? They think that, oh, kids movie, it's lame. Probably. That's, that's one ah. of the things. It, it's a kids movie, Disney Pixar kind of deal. Uh, but I, I don't know. Like, if I want to, I just have to watch it myself, I guess. I guess I can understand that kind of mentality, but a movie that makes you think about your psychology and the psychology of a 11 year old, that is actually really interesting. So I, I, I don't know. Too many Pixar movies that came out that were very underwhelming. I mean, even, even if I enjoyed every single movie that has come out of Pixar over the past few years, Cars 2, Brave, and Monsters University are not really on the strongest side of Pixar's best. Like, uh, you have Up, Monsters Inc., Ratatouille, and Toy Story 3 on one side. And then on the other side, you have Cars 2, uh, Monsters University, and Brave, which are not that good. But eh, for Pixar standards, it's actually pretty terrible. Huh. So yeah, I can see the reticence that some people may have before going to watch Inside Out. Go watch Inside Out. It's actually a pretty good movie. You, it will make you think. And I, I mean that. It's It will legit make you think. It's a surprisingly good movie. Hmm. All right, all right. Well, I like I said, I can't... Probably I won't... I can't watch it because friends doesn't want to watch it. So I guess I'll watch it alone. Who Go knows? watch it on your own at midnight t- midnight screenings. No, I don't want to be like Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Go but, for um, it. You'll be the only person in the cinema. Go for it. Enjoy yourself. Just like you'll be there, like box of popcorn, nice big drink. Just like, I am going to watch this movie like mad. And no <laughs> one can stop me. No, you know but... what? You, you know what? That's how I watch, like, and speaking of Pixar, that's how I watched The Incredibles, Cars 1 and Cars 2. I was the only person in the cinema when I watched those movies. Really, no? Seriously, I, those those three movies, I was alone in the theater. They played the movies specifically for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, it was uh, awesome. But talking about movies, right? Talking about movies, I, I recently watched Ant-Man with my friends. And, and if you fun. try to spoil, if you try to spoil a single thing of it, I haven't watched it yet. It came out yesterday in Spain. Uh, how do I put this? He's a man, he's an ant, he's a man, he's an ant. <laughs> Norman. <laughs> no? Know, because hitmans are really expensive. I'd uh, hire one. If it was in my power. <laughs> oh, well, talking about people turning into humans. Uh, we got Equestria Girls 3 coming out soon. And, well, it seems that you can get the box set Blu-ray on Amazon. It's all three series, so that's cool. Oh, the all three movies, you mean? Mm-hmm. All three movies in one box. Hmm. So that is cool. That is cool. I'm still amazed they're able to make all these box sets, you know, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's absolutely great. 
but they still can't release a single friggin' season in the UK without somehow butchering it. Uh, I know they, what you mean. They only released, like, season one, right? Yeah. 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 Well, they're, uh, they're, like, they've released season one on DVD. That's great. Season two, they've done that thing where they split it up, which, okay, fine. Maybe they'll bundle them together eventually. But season three, four, they're just in some mystical wonderland of Australia and America. Whoa, and they ain't whoa, coming whoa. anywhere near. Hang on a minute. Rewind. You say that they are already out in the UK, even if they are out of order and disjointed? Yeah, the season two is out and like, like, what they've done is, um, like, if you go like into the season one DVD, um, like the one I've got here, when you open it up, you've got the various discs and you know that it's part of originally, like, they were releasing like three or four episode blocks, like in, like, DVD, DVD releases. For season two, they've done the same thing, except they've just released them all separately. That's what it looks like to me, because they haven't released any box set for season two. They've done it, like, they've released, like, the first three episodes on one disc. Next three or four in the next disc, and then same, same, same. So it's just in UK. If you're a My Little Pony fan, you want to watch the show. It is a pain in the boots to try and get to. Hmm. Amazon looking for DVD. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can find something. This is ridiculous. I cannot believe that they are actually doing this. The the only available uh, DVD sets that I'm seeing right here, they are all NTSC American imports. That don't play on uh, on European DVDs. Oh, here we have My Little Pony, The Return of Harmony Limited Edition DVD. And um, let's see what region is this one. This is a PAL region. Comes with one disc, and it has Return of Harmony Part One and Two, Lesson Zero, Luna Eclipse, Season, uh, Sisterhood Social, and Kitty. Wow, that's actually remarkable. They are they, they have the six first episodes of Season Two. In order! <laughs> they are literally in order. Episode 1, episode 2, episode 3, episode 4, 5, and 6. They are literally... That's the first time I have seen a DVD like that. I cannot believe it. There must be something <laughs> wrong here. Hang on a minute. Well, it is the... Well, single DVD. So you have to buy them separate, you, separately. Like, you're not getting a box set. But the one that Short Factory is presenting here is... A Blu-ray set of all three movies, all in one box. Oh I can't believe it. I found another DVD, also, PAL region, <laughs> one disc. It has Hearts and Hooves Day, A Friend Indeed, Putting Your Hoof Down, It's About Time, and Dragon Quest. Again, five episodes, and they are in the correct order. <laughs> this is weird. In the correct order, but there is a catch, because for every single... Right, if you buy one of those DVDs, you get the episodes in the correct order, and you get your five or six... But you're paying round about, I can't remember what it is on Amazon. I remember seeing it in store for round about eight or nine pounds. That was round about Yeah, this, this actually, I just saw that they have a DVD for a Canterlot wedding that is coming out on August 17th of this year. The price for this DVD is nine pounds. I mean, this is ridiculous. By the time that they end up releasing all the episodes on, on their separate DVDs and they make a bundle and sell the box set, the box set with all the DVDs and all the episodes is going to be like what, fifteen pounds? Mm-hmm. So you rather oh. wait. You well, rather you wait the... before buying all these. You say fifteen pounds. That is not what they sell it for. When the box set comes out here, they sell it for twenty six quid. Ooh. So that's, that's ridiculous. This, the UK gets it bad in the pricing range because you either get badly priced in terms of buying the DVDs separately, or you can buy them all together where you pay less, but you're going to have to wait a long time, if ever, oh for it to God. come out. Hmm. I it's cannot like, believe know. this price. I cannot believe this price tag that I'm seeing. A DVD with the 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 May the Best Pet Win episode and a fi- and four more, twenty four pounds. Oof. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there's not much to say. I mean, like I said, if you're a My Little Pony fan in PAL region, particularly the UK, is not a nice place to be. And the DVDs are a pain neck to get. Blu-ray just does not exist to My Little Pony in Europe. It just does not. It doesn't. And then, and then, if you want to say, for example, download on iTunes, oh wait, you can't, because it's not on there. It's yeah, on the it's American on one. But you know, you know why it's not on there? Oh, because of those, it. because of those bloody Spaniards. This is, <laughs> and, and and I will explain it to you why. Because when you bring something to, because in Region One. That's America, that's NTSC, everybody speaks English. No, I'm sorry, everybody speaks American in American. It's fine. That's fine. That's okay. You don't need to translate it to different languages. Because Murrican, 
it's the accepted language in the US. Okay? That's fine. But when you bring something to Europe, you need to translate it to uh, um, uh, Spanish, German, French, Italian, Portuguese. You need to translate it to several languages so everybody can watch it. And then you have to region code it so that when you don't load the episodes from Spain, you have to watch the episodes in Spanish. You cannot watch the episodes in English if you like download them from instant video. Same goes with the Google, the Google with the Google Shop. If I download a movie for my tablet, I have to watch the movie in Spanish. I cannot watch it in English, and I have no option to put the movie in English. That's that is that is the the bullcrap part. But not only that, you also have to lock uh, distribution rights. You have to talk with the distribution companies. You have to make deals with the distribution companies because. Some people will not want to let go of those rights because it gives them money, and other people will not want to pick them up because it doesn't give them enough money. It's a jumble mess when you try to bring something to the PAL region, and that happens with video games as well. That well, happens. Yeah, with, I mean, it, exactly. Yeah, that's why Europe you, gets the worst of it when it comes to video games because it's like no matter what. I mean, if it's an American game or if it's a Japanese game, it is basically guaranteed to hit Europe last and even then what they seem to do this thing i love i love capitalism sometimes because it throws me nice little gems like this where they release a console it's say ps4 they'll release it in america and release it for 400 dollars, right so fine they can do that then they bring it over to britain and to the rest of europe and what they do and they're very good with this and it's a fantastic technique they look at that price 400 dollars, and they go Okay, right, we need to adapt this to Europe. Um, has anyone got a rubber? Can we just rub out that dollar sign? Let's replace that with a pound. Oh, that's perfect. We'll sell it like that. And they double the frigging price. <laughs> like, wow. Europe, why? 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 Hi. <laughs> How? <laughs> well, getting back on track with the movies, like the Equestria Girls movies, like, we mentioned before that the movie is going to come out on Discovery Kids. So, yay, there's that. And then we also mentioned that the DVD and Blu-ray is coming out too. So, if you guys are picking up the DVD or Blu-ray early, um, you should do it now and pre-order it on Shock Factory. And if you do it now, like pre-order now, you get a chance to win. Oh no, straight not get a chance to win, but you get a chance to get a limited edition poster. And this is good. This is cool. And I, if I do remember right, this is the same poster that you could have got if you attended Comic Con. So yeah, if you're interested, go get it. And if you're not really interested in the poster, you can just get the box set. Or but if you don't care about the Quest Girls at all, you can, you don't Hey, the Quest Girls is a good movie. Like, mm-hmm. It's nice. Mm-hmm. For pony movie. Like, the G4 pony. Not my ponies! Not my ponies! Hoofs are nothing! Hoofs are bust! Oh, well, you, um, you, 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 oh, you. But, well, okay, if, <laughs> if the movies are not your thing, if the movies are not your thing, you could always read the books. They say books are much better, right? Books are, uh, are really well, uh, yeah. I never read books. Good. Well, but anywho, um, there's also coming out with a four pack box. This includes the Equestria Girls through the Mirror Book, uh, Rainbow Rocks, Rainbow Rocks the Main Event, Rainbow Rocks Sunset Shimmers, Time to Shine book. So you get all this in one box. So this is cool. This is a good way to get a collection ready because well, you get all four books in one. Cute little box or awesome little box. I don't know, where I, I don't know how you want to see it. Can, well, can the, we have an entire Equestria Girls movie where it's just Vinyl Scratch walking on the street listening to music, please? I'll, uh, I'll buy that. I'll have that. I'll have that on repeat on every window, on every uh, window on my desktop and every monitor on my house. No, I don't know, man. I don't know. But from what I understand, the books are different from the movies. Consider them prequels to the movies, which is cool. Well, definitely. I mean, I mean, that's the great thing about books is that if they can't fit something into like the TV show or the movie, they can fit it into the book, you know, because you're not constrained by budget or, you know, um, casting limitations or whatever, anything like that. Although, having said that, have you heard what, how they're planning on releasing it, um, here in the UK? How? What they're going to do is, um, they're going to release like the first book chapter by chapter for about five pounds each. And then okay. once they've done all 20 chapters, they're going to bundle them together and somehow make, sell them for about 70 quid a pop. 
So they are basically doing the same thing they are doing with the DVDs, only with the books. You know what's really worrying is the fact that I sounded far too convincing when I said that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, my... That's not a word. The alarm just went off. (laughs) Uh, Sweetie Bell just got a job, all right. (laughs) But it's the sort of thing that you can see happening. I mean, I doubt they do it with a book. That's the one good thing is that they, there is no way they could possibly do that with a book like they can do with the stupid DVDs. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, to me, this is kind of limited edition kind of deal. Like, this is a bundle. Like, yeah, I mean, the book is four books. So let's just say you're paying five pound per book. So four times size is about 20. And then you... You said they're going to sell it for 17 All right. It's kind of saving there. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's definitely kind of saving, but I suppose it's, uh, I mean, is that American prices? For now, with this one, uh, the price on the box set for the books, uh, let's see. If I do remember right, it's about 20 plus dollars. Give me a second. Uh, you can pre-order it on Amazon if you want to. But how much is it on the Amazons? Ah, yes. Hardcover, $28.07. Oh, you've got to get those seven cents. That seven cents is incredibly important. <laughs> You'll save up $11.93, 30% off. I don't know. I'm just reading prices right now, and i got no idea. <laughs> yeah, I apologize, by the way, if I'm coming across like some sort of grumpy gibbon or anything like that. I, I'm actually really happy, but it's just <laughs> this is one of the things that really grinds my gears. Just limited they editions? Not, when they, not limited. When they give uneven prices to things? Hmm. Both those things and the fact that we in Europe do tend to get the worst end of the deal in this sort of regard. You know, just, I mean, you know, I mean, it's like, it's like when you're a fan of anything, like, you know, whenever you're a fan of a particular movie, video games we're talking about, or books or whatever else, is the fact that Europe tends, unless it's actually made in Europe, we're kind of the... You know, we're let it to last. You know, it's like, oh, we'll release it in Asia. We'll get it across to America. Oh, we'll get some special editions going. And uh, have we released it in Europe yet? Are we bothering? I don't know if they, uh, should we do it after lunch? Maybe I don't know. If, if, <laughs> you know, there's a bit of a lazy fair attitude to the whole thing. Well, honestly, when it comes to that, the reason why Southeast Asia get it easy is because, well, we just copied from the American game. And just change the region code to our region. So that's about it. And we also import Japanese games. So we don't really have a dedicated region system. Like how the games are needed to be translated in all European countries. Like I do know that if you buy the European version of the game, your game must have uh, a language setting to change them into Spanish, German... Um, yeah, French, yeah, yeah. Italian, and French, and yes, so on. Yes, 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 yes. You're completely so right. you have to do that too. You're absolutely right. So that's about it, if I do understand right. So I don't. See, for me, I don't see the problem like you guys are facing. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, well, okay, that, I guess that's fine. But you understand that it can be a major pain in the ass. To, oh, yeah, to I do. With that. I do. Oh, yeah. Because because when when you guys say that, oh. Um, it's expensive and whatnot. Like, for me, a game, like, especially a Wii U game, it's going to cost me about 200 ringgit, which is, if you convert the price, about the same amount as 60 American dollars, even less probably. But it's the amount of 200 bucks you're dishing out just to buy a game. But it's that thing of even there, like, if 60 bucks, if you translate that to British money, that's probably closer to about 40 quid. And some of the Wii U games we get here are 50. So even then, you're actually still getting, at times, a better deal. So that's the kind of... True that, true that. But like I said, it's the conversion rate and the money. Like 200 bucks just to buy a game. It's money well spent somewhere else, like Pizza Hut or Pony Merch. Oh, definitely. No, definitely. I'm, <laughs> I'm with you sure, you, could ta- you, could ta- you could take that and buy both things and still have spare to get some Coke. What are you talking about? Oh, true that, true that. You just make me hungry still- now. Uh, I could go for a pizza now, actually. Actually, I could as well. Mm. But I don't know, man. Like the DVDs, they're fun. They're fun. Like I, I will buy them if I get a chance to see them. Like literally, sorry. Um, like yesterday, I went to the DVD store and I saw the My Little Pony DVDs, and they were in separate 
DVD boxes. Like, ah. they have for few, they have a few episodes and like, oh wow, this is awesome, but I don't want Why? this. Like, I want them in a box set. You know what? I am going to share something that I didn't think I was going to share, but, uh, it makes sense here. We have something similar going on with anime. Hmm. Here in Spain, um, as much as I praise the uh, the way that we uh, import, we, we yeah, it's it, it's that right? Import, yeah, we import, mm-hmm. we import DVDs from um, anime from Japan. We import it directly from them, and same goes with Japanese and Asian action movies and all that. Like the, I have both copies of The Raid in, uh, and they come in Spanish with a really good Spanish dub, by the way. And they come uncensored, uncut. All the violence is there. All the, right. all the, all the nasty parts and everything is there. Same goes with the anime. Not a single anime that comes to Spain is censored, except for Pokemon. And that's because <laughs> we got Pokemon from the American market because it was cheaper and easier to, to, uh, to, to handle. Yeah. We didn't even, we didn't even get Digimon through the American market. We got that straight from Japan. So we got it like with all the original soundtrack and all that. It was it's wonderful. I'm going getting off topic. We just mm-hmm. got Attack on Titan on DVD, and they are doing the exact same thing that you guys are describing. They are giving us the the first season. They are giving it to us on DVDs, on individual DVDs that you have to you have to pay 15 euros for, and they have five or four chapters each, and that's it. Today, when I went to the to my local DVD shop, I saw because I wanted to get my father a, a birthday present, which is on Wednesday. I saw the first time the first this is the first time I saw one of the DVD sets of Attack on Titan, and it's only half of the first season. What the hell is this? The reason why they do that is to get their money back. How they do it in Japan is they produce the anime and put it on the TVs. And to make the money back, they produce the DVDs, and in said DVDs, there's only probably two, two episodes, three episodes probably, and they ship it out in volumes. But that's, so that's probably fine. One volume. But that's fine. That's Japan. They can do that. Let them do that because it's their product. Don't bother having to import the, the DVD and spending money on uh, uh, importing it. Just wait until it's all out and just release it as a DVD set. You ha- they have done it in the past. Black Lagoon is all out on a DVD set. Same goes with Neo Genesis Evangelion and uh, Massinger C. Why don't they do the same thing with Attack on Titan? Oh, God, and because with it's so new. many others. It's so... The, the title that you mentioned just now, they were old titles. And, like, I'm guessing how things work for your country is they follow what Japan does. So, if... Japan has singles out, they drop it out. And if Japan does a box set for Ava or Black Lagoon or even Dragon Ball, they'll probably or this local distributor will import them and dub it. I don't know how it works, but they will do that. So I'm not 100% sure, but that's how Japan is. But besides that, uh, there's no good segue for this, guys. There, like, there, I'm there trying is to a think. Segue. I mean, uh, there, are, there is always a segue, Norman. I mean, like, Okay, they, they might be bad with the animes and all the rest of it, you know, and I, I will complain about how Europe gets treated, even though it is entirely justified, I do understand. But at least it's not quite so bad. I mean, they do throw us a bone at Christmas occasionally with the Christmas DVD releases. They are quite good. True, true. And, well, Christmas is a fun family time, right? Like, you spend around the Christmas tree, you you put presents under the tree, and... Have good times. Cle- Am I right? Clearly, you haven't watched any of the National Lampoon movies, but yeah, okay, <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to. Yeah, they are good. They are good. Don't judge a book by its cover. But guys, I want to ask you guys: like, what do you get decorate your Christmas tree with? Like ornaments? What kind of ornaments do you put? Guys Norman, with? it's oh, it's July. I'm just asking. It's the twi- it's actually the twenty fifth of July. We could pretend that <laughs> we're having, and it is, cr- and it is winter in Australia. So, uh, yes, no, uh, I'm trying to justify this, but you know, we all know we can't. Uh, no, okay, you know what? Like, like I just said before, there's no good segue. Um, ornaments, Christmas ornaments, available out there. Like you have a rainbow dash and twilight sparkle ornament. Yeah, you can go get them if you want to. 
And if you want to buy them early, it's July. This is a pretty good time. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Merry oh, Christmas, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and have a happy new year. And I killed you. No good segue, but hey, at least you can decorate your tree with Princess Twilight and Awesome Rainbow Dash. And they wear, well, Christmas hats. So that's cool. Yeah. No, James? Oh my god, no, shut up. <laughs> you've discussed Christmas uh, in July, it's the cardinal sin. You know, you, once you've mentioned that, it's like, right, go stand in a naughty corner. Aww. Uh, but, uh, talking about naughty corners, I know someone who's going to BronyCon. And a silver quill. <laughs> All right. Uh, he's quite naughty on the review show. <laughs> I'll, I'll certainly. I've, I've, I've heard rumors about him. I, I know um, Sugar Dove has been on a few times. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. How naughty is but, naughty? Oh, let's just say that he has a twisted mindset. <laughs> well, great. He fits in right in with the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, well, if you want to catch him at BronyCon, just go find the guy with the bird face. <laughs> oh, that's just scary. <laughs> just saw the video. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> never, never going to share room with him. Oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> I want... Just imagine waking up to that. No way, man. I want to now. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> I'll bring in my flashlight and make sure that there is no, uh, the doors are not open. <laughs> no, what happened? He just says, uh, good morning. Yeah. You just have, you just have to see the video, man. Like, you just have to see the video on his YouTube channel. Hi, Josh. Oh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still, um, uh, you guys know that I love TCGs. I, I like the card games and stuff. Mm -hmm. So at BronyCon, they're releasing or they're early pr publishing the set, like, what's this set called? Um, Chaos something? I, I don't really remember, but they're Seeds out there. Chaos? Uh, I, I think so. I, I don't really 100% remember what's the set called, but yeah, on August 7 to 9, uh, if you go to the Enterplay booth, you can get the, whatchamacallit, card game. Like, the, they're having a team deck. Like, I'm seeing that they have a Fluttershy and Pinky. And I think with every purchase, you also get a Doctor Who card. And this is from Season 5, so that's awesome. And also, if you go to their booth, that which is uh, booth number 206, you'll get a free Starlight Glimmer MLP trading card to add you to your collection. <laughs> and I don't know, I mean, like, that's fun. Like, I, I want this. I wish I could go. Does the Starlight Glimmer card comes with... a? Uh... Uh, with, with, with an equalitarian uh, temporary tattoo that you can put on you. <laughs> I, it would be genius if they do. It would be genius if they, they should do. be doing that. They should be doing temporary mm -hmm. tattoos. Should make a comeback. Come on, they were yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. definitely, they were. Yeah, I mean, we've all had one. We've all done it. Oh, we all have. Even those who yeah, say they yeah. haven't, they have done it. Yeah, true that. True that. It's just fun. Like, this is the CCG set 5. Oh, yeah, here's a set. Equestrian Odyssey. Wow, damn, the fifth set now? Wow, that's a lot. They are going faster than Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering took a while before they started making their own different sets of cards out of the main series. I am so back on all these card games, and that's because I put a hold on buying them. <laughs> oh, good, man. That's good, because... Yeah, it's good. Right? My economy has never been better, but I miss these car games. <laughs> well, you you can buy them sometime. Like, a perfect uh, way to get you off the crack is just to... Buy the fat pack. Yeah, right? and that's and, and when you yeah, and that's when you get an overdose and you die. It's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fat pack is just a pack of nine boosters, and you get a nice box to keep them in. Mm. So yeah, that's cool. Oh. And you get a D twenty magic dice. Oh, are you? Oh, those. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, I have done those. I have bought those in the past. Yeah, those are fun. You mean the ones that comes with like a cardboard box that has? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I have bought those. We're talking about Magic: The Gathering now. No, forget about the forget about the MLP CCG. We don't like that game. Nah, no, it's like hey, I, I do. <laughs> I do. It's yeah, I know. difficult. Okay, okay. Let, let's just say the game is difficult to pick up. Like within all the card games I've played before, I played Yu-Gi-Oh, and this pony card game is hard. Oh, 
uh, it's not harder than Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh, you have to do math. I don't think that you have to do math in the My Little Pony game, right? Uh, a bit. Oh, God, why? <laughs> because the game is cruel and unusual and punishing. I actually, I'll tell you what, no word of a lie, I actually bought my first deck of MLP cards three days ago. So mm-hmm. I went into the store, this new um, board game shop, uh, card game place, opened up in town. So I thought, oh, I'll go buy. And I bought loads of stuff. And I thought, right, I'm going to buy a deck. So I did. And the owner there, who I get along with quite well, he was like, uh, he tends to like test out games as well so he can learn the rules. So if a customer comes in, they can kind of, you know, he can show them the ropes before they buy something, you know, sort of like a test and buy kind of thing. So um, we opened up a pack and he was having a look at it. And he's going, okay, right, let me try and get this. I'll tell you what, speak to me tomorrow and we'll see, see how well I do. I came back mm. and he was just like, oh man, I don't get this game. I've, I've been, <laughs> he's been watching videos on YouTube about how to play it and he's gotten more confused than he was when he started. Oh boy. Well, true that, true that. I mean, the best way to start is with the first boost, uh, first series or what, what did they call it? No, you know, you know or... what? You know what? A strange game. The best way to win is not to play. <laughs> oh, no, you have war to play. games. Nicely done, James. Nicely done. <laughs> no, but you have to play, man. You have to play. It's ponies. Mm. Yeah. If the best way is to play on the first set to get the base rules. Like, after that, they insert a lot of other rules into the game that I don't get it because, well, I don't play with anyone here. So, my my gameplay is very limited. But yeah, I mean, the game is difficult to p- learn. It's, it has a high learning curve. And once you get past that curve, it's going to be a bit easier to that's, understand that's the whole thing. That's not really, that, but that's usually, you know what, that works against the game in itself. And they should look into, they should look into making it friendlier. You know how Magic the Gathering is easy to learn, difficult to master? Those are the building blocks of a good game. When it is easy to get the whole of it, it's like you have your mana pool, your discard pile, and this is your library. You can have up to seven cards, and this is how you cast spells. This is how you summon creatures. Okay, you got that? They, yeah, okay, there you go. And then you, it's, that's, that's the basics. That's all you need to know how to play Magic the Gathering. Then you start adding the different rules, the, uh, like blocking, uh, blocking spells, or, uh, Landfall, or what, or what, or like, uh, how the equipments work, etc. And like, that's when you start making it difficult to master, even though you know how it's played. When you make it difficult to learn, that's, that doesn't work in the favor of the game itself, actually. It, it's actually, it, it works against it. From my personal experience, at least, that's how I feel about car games. Yeah, and the same rule applies to video games as well. The best video games are those that, you know, you can play the game and, you know, you can become good at it and enjoy it. But yeah. if you go a bit deeper into it and learn a few nuances, it just becomes a whole different game. I mean, fighting games are well known for that, like Virtua Fighter yeah. and Dead or Alive and that sort of thing. But, you know, you can... Uh, puzzle games like Portal, for example. Oh, uh, Portal exactly, Portal. The P- Portal is easy to learn, but it's so difficult to master that game until you start, like, doing these crazy stunts with the, with the Portal gun. Yeah. <laughs> I do agree with you there, but like the My Little Pony card game, it's hard to pick up, but the the ruling and stuff is quite easy because it's about balancing the deck. It, you know what? I'm not making a good argument here because I am a bad guy to say this example. I, I play Magic, so yeah. No, no, but, man. I play magic as well. You play more card games than than I think we do. So you're you're an expert card game resident here. By the way, we are talking a lot about pr- pretty much nothing. <laughs> I just realized that we have been going on for like almost fifty minutes of podcast, and there is more ranting and rambling than usual. Uh, you hey, may so have noticed possible. that. You you may have noticed that there is no uh, guest on site yet. So <laughs> that's yeah, probably true, why. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 still but still James I mean the game is fun like I'm not saying like it isn't I'm not saying it isn't hmm? I'm not saying it isn't yeah. fun I'm just true, saying true. that when it comes to card games you need to streamline it or else you run mm-hmm. the risk of alienating your audience or your target like when I look at the My Little Pony card game it's one of the few things that are out there that I am like yeah this is Hasbro catering to the to the teenager grown ups demographic because i don't see a little a little kid 
uh, grabbing the card game and starting to play with it. It will it, it will look on the on the bright colors and the illustration and all that, even if they are just the screen caps from the actual show. But James, you do know that every card game that was invented was made for kids, but are mastered by adults, it's, right? It's a children's <laughs> card game. But yeah, that's that's probably the funny thing is that. But that's why Magic the Gathering is so popular. That's why Legend of the Five Rings is also so popular. Is because they are not complicated to learn. When you start throwing other things on it, yeah, that's a bit. I don't know. Triple Triad comes to mind when I think about those. Kind of <laughs> needless, triad is awesome. needlessly complicated card games. Uh, uh, God, I will say Yu-Gi-Oh is a needless complicated, needlessly complicated card game. I played that game for two years. I still don't know what the hell is going on. It's like Homestuck. Like, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh is the Homestuck of card games. I cannot comprehend hey, but- it. I don't know what's going on. I am lost and confused and I want to go home now. <laughs> Honestly, Yu-Gi-Oh, co- the, the reason why Yu-Gi-Oh is complicated is just, it has like what? So much cards that is accessible from its library. That's about it. But you know what makes difference between most of the card games? Like what makes Magic well more accessible is because of their game ma- game match and game type. And one of my favorite is drafting. Like you just buy a pack of three boosters and gather a group of four to six people and you just open the packs, pick a card and pass it to the left. And then do that until you're you collect all the cards from your other players and build a deck from that. That's fun. And other things that make Magic awesome is their national championship and their international championship games, like tournaments and stuff. And, well, it seems that My Little Pony, the card game, is also doing that now with the Continental Champion for 2015 at GenCon. In India, India, Indianapolis? In Indiana, Indi- India, Anna- Indianapolis. Yeah, Indianapolis. Uh, on July 31st. You know when I will be stoked about, uh, My Little Pony games and all that? When they make an official My Little Pony RPG. Uh, or a, or a My Little Pony module for Dungeons and Dragons. Because after all, Wizards of the Coast belongs to Hasbro. And mm. uh, which is the coast does uh, does uh, D and D right now? They can very well release a joke module for for my little for Dungeons and Dragons of My oh, Little Pony, man. and then Spoony will review it in Counter Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Then you will see no, but, him angry. Uh, <laughs> but back to the uh, game uh, Continental Championship. This is happening at Gamescom, and well, if you enter, you get a chance to get a play mat, which is way awesome. I know, James, you had a playmate of, uh, Ink, what was it called? Ink Eyes. Ink, Ink Eyes and stuff. Yeah, it's, I don't know and... if it's a character in, in Magic the Gathering. I know that it's kind of like a mustelid, kind of like rat lady, anthropomorphic rat lady kind of character. Mm-hmm. But it's not official. Like, that is fan made. Really? Ink Eyes is not official? No, no, no. Ink Eyes is official, but the playmat is not. Oh. Like, the playmat no. is drawn by an artist called Easy Major. He is both on Tumblr, DeviantArt, and Full Affinity. He's a furry artist. He draws not safe for work stuff, so you're warm, guys. Um, mm-hmm. uh, or you're welcome. Depends on whatever <laughs> floats your boat. And he did do the playmat, uh, a couple of, I think it's more than a year and a half ago. And one of my friends got it for me. And it's awesome. It's a really good play. It's the best playmat that I have. This one, is official by Hasbro and the art is the flower from what was the flower again James where Apple Bloom has to eat to tell the truth the seeds of truth yeah so it's that flower and the art is done by Pixel Kitties oh can I see it well click on the links that is a direct reference to the Black Lotus illustration. It is. Yeah. It is. That is the Black Lotus from 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 the original Magic the Gathering set, but it's the Seeds of Truth. Yep. So I, I'm not sure how you get this one because um, according to their uh, statement here is um, the two contestants on Saturday uh, best two out of three single elimination match, and this is where the price gets really good. Blah blah blah. Um, truly outrageous promo files, uh, championship play mat, and I think that's about it. And then there's, well, if you want to know more info, just look into the show notes. It's all there. So yeah, play mats if you're interested, and well, just go there. I mean, 
usually people who participate in this kind of tournaments, they go for this and they also go for other stuff like side events. Like, uh, if for, I'm not hundred percent sure for how this one's going to work, since it's at GenCon, I'm sure there's a lot of other games over there too. So you guys could just have fun. But for magic events, there are stuff like side events like cubes, drafting, uh, meet artists who drew cards for the game, and other exciting things. People who sell cards probably and accessories. So yeah. It's fun, it's fun. We recently had one in Singapore and people seem to enjoy it. Unfortunately for me, I couldn't go. <laughs> uh, they said. But that's about it. We talk about a lot of things that we like. Kyle, what do you like? What do I like? I like you guys. <laughs> uh, that's, that's nice of you, man. I do, that's not in any way laced with sarcasm. I know I've got my radio voice on and it sounds like it could be, but no, I do like you guys. Honestly. Prove. Aww. Yay. But hey, that's the news for this week. And, well, sorry that we couldn't get you a guest for this week, guys. It seems that we've been busy. Everyone's busy and stuff, and news is lacking by our content. We we talk about Christmas on, well, July, out of all... I can't uh, believe we... we're all talking about this in July. On the 25th, no less, actually. But, oh, yeah, for goodness true. sake. But still, but still... Probably next week we'll have an awesome guest. Probably I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But hey, but hey. Can you tell that? You can any... you guys tell that we are hurting for news because we are in the middle of the season hiatus and nothing is happening? Oh. <laughs> I just realized that I am channeling Raw a lot. Actually, yeah, they're, they're, I think we're, we are turning to Raw in spirits. Praise the sun. Oh. Praise wow. The sun. No. no. Yes. No, um, it's kind of a shame, you I know, mean... because it's during those. During these times when people realize that uh, whether they like the show or not anymore, I mm. I have to master the energy to do the review show now. <laughs> leave this on. Uh, leave this. Leave this in, by the way, because I actually I want I want people to kind of know that I am starting to get burned out of pony. I'm getting no. bored so hard. Yes. No. No. I've been no, I've been no. watching this show and doing these things for like what two years already. Yeah, you, you've been yeah. done for almost... Mm, uh, but hey, I don't know. I mean, it's fun, right? N- never get off. Never get off. But, uh, I don't know. Do, do you guys I'm know why they... I want to get off the ride. Ah. No. Do you guys know why they did the season hiatus? Because they are like, in... The, they, because they, 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 they want to find a way of having... selling it in Britain. They want to find a way <laughs> of doing Perhaps it. Perhaps... The... They are having trouble developing season six, and that's why they are uh, ex- splitting it into two. The, no, no, no. Wait, I know exactly. No, I know exactly why they are doing this. I know exactly why they are doing this. They are so idiots. Okay, I know exactly why they are doing this. For the same reason why Gravity Falls stopped airing when the summer started, because why? because Disney Channel knows how to do this. Cartoon Network knows how to do this. Discovery Family doesn't know how to do this because Discovery Family doesn't care about their cartoon shows. What they should have done was we are not going to air season 5 until October or until September at least. And then we're going to stop because th- this is this is why they had such low ratings uh throughout uh, the first half of season season 5 is because there are no kids watching it. Every every kid is on vacation. Every kid is on holiday. They are doing something else. Kids watch their TV shows when they are in school time. Wow. Well. This is why season four did so well. This is why the, 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 the season four premiere and the season four finale broke records when it came to like a viewers, view, viewership. Because the, the, the kids were watching it. Without kids, you only rely on the adult audience. If anything, this proves this proves how little the Brony fandom is uh, when it comes to the My Little Pony fandom. Is that we are we are we are a, we are a fraction of it. We are not the we are not we are not a big cluster. We are just one more. If we had to quantify the fandom in a train, we are only one of the one of the wagons. I don't know if I would agree 100% to that thing. You can do whatever you want. I think this is the reason why they are splitting it into two. They're waiting for their target target audience to come back. I don't know. I mean, this also 
revolves with other shows like Steven Universe, uh, Adventure Time, and a lot more. I, I don't know why. This happens a lot with um, American-based shows. But you see, so, what Steven Universe does is actually very clever. Because instead of uh, releasing every week, they release five episodes in one week, and then they stop. And then a couple of weeks later, they come back and they release another five episodes. What they call Stephen Bombs. The next one is coming in, is coming in August. So yeah, now, most of the episodes are eleven minutes long at most. All of the episodes so, are eleven minutes long. They are short format, like like Adventure Time. Yeah, so I mean, you get more content there. Like you, you that's why they can have five episodes every day, five new episodes every day. I bring you. Five, so, episodes yeah, every week. five episodes every week is 50, 55 minutes worth of episode. You can tell an entire movie in 50 minutes. If you go, if you, yeah, no, actually, if you take off the, if you remove the fluff of most movies, you can end up with movies that last 30 minutes or 20 minutes. Hell, the Transformers movies, movies could end in half an hour. If you mm. take away all the fluff. That's uh that's what Steven Universe does. This is probably uh, I've been watching a lot of Steven Universe right now uh, by the, lately by the way. I love that show. It's really good. I think that's why it works so well is because it doesn't fiddle around. It just goes to the point and that's why I like probably, that's, probably. that's what I like. My Little Pony does the same thing by the way. But because it has 22 minutes it can take its time to uh play around a little bit more. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, with this kind of cases like a full, like a full season, they split into two or split into trees. I I don't understand why. Like I've been asking people, and people don't know why too. This is something new for me. So like this is the first time we experience it with ponies. So that's something interesting. Mm-hmm. But hey, um, that's ponies. And if you're interested in listening our opinion about the show, or episodes, or even the comics, we do a review show on the same channel which comes out every Thursday. So, hey, check that out. But I think we're near our end. I I don't know what to say anymore, except if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. You can reach the show's Twitter account at the MBS Show. So, what we'll tweet about how she's dealing with the season hiatus. I think she's doing pretty well. Yeah. I think so. Maybe she's broken. Mm-hmm. Oh, problem. And as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I feel about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy is food. I like food. I can eat food. Food is good. <laughs> You're all normal. Shut up. Oh, yeah, oh, you. What about you, man? Well, you can find me on Twitter. And uh, lately I have been doing a lot of tweeting as well. Because I, that's what I share my artwork on James Cork, uh, on Twitter. Check my div- you can check my DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantart.com and check my movies late blog when I review movies at askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Thank you guys so much for checking the, pl- the those places. By the way, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing this. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Kyle, what about you, man? Well, you can find me at uh, facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall, where I've been posting updates on what I've been doing with uh, Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes. We've been Posting episodes weekly for that, we pretty consistently now. We're actually, I'm actually recording the finale today, so exciting times ahead. That mm-hmm. uh, you can tune in on the YouTube channel at Highland Bronies. Um, like I said, we've been interviewing loads of people. I mean, we've already interviewed Norman and James here. Sights Unseen is actually our newest guest, and uh, we'll be having new episodes up every Tuesday, so feel free to watch. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I've also got a Tumblr, the one Midnight Scribe uh, at Tumblr.com. I don't know how the addresses work. The one midnight scribe. You'll find me. <laughs> I'll, link, I'll link in the show notes. I'll link in the show notes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on BonnieVilleLife.com. And also, please do like and subscribe. We do need love. We're about a few ways to 500 subs, so yay. We can get it up there. Come on, we can do it. Come on, guys. Let's all band together. Hold hands. 500 subs. 500 subs. Everybody, Uh, four out. Norman, take your shirt off. (laughs) Norman. What? No. Show those floppy Uh, old man arms. No. Show the floppy. uh, The ladies like the floppiness. 
Flappy, 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 flapping on the wind. Oh, look at that. It's like a dolphin. It's magnificent. <laughs> no, but you know what? I, I've just been thinking, like, 500, that's petty change for silver. <laughs> he could get that easily. Oh, now you are comparing internet. That's not a word. It's amazing. Ah, uh, uh, that's not a word. That, that is a word. <laughs> it's in the dictionary. It is in the dictionary of... That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> Not says sweetie bot. But anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been out of control. <laughs> I have been the ranter. <laughs> and we'll catch you guys next week with another awesome episode of the MBS show. And Rose not here to take us out. Dang it. James, take us out. For dinner. But you, 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 yes. You, you stop calling me Norman. Oh, uh, I've been left out here. I feel, so, I feel gutted. <laughs> Uh, it feels like we'll we fell so far apart. <laughs> I know. Just stop flirting. You don't like. <laughs> we'll you don't look at me in the eye anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, guys, see you next week. Bye bye. You want to leave me forever, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs>